Hello class, this is section 3.3 and in this video we are going to discuss Fourier sine and cosine series. Sometimes we don't want to include both sine and cosine terms in our Fourier expansion and depending on the initial conditions it is necessary to just use sines or just use cosines. In this video we are going to investigate what happens when we restrict the Fourier series in this way. So let fx be a piecewise move function on 0L. Remember that in the previous setting, we used minus L to L instead. So this is just half of the interval that we used last time, the right half. We can approximate fx on 0 to L as a sum of sines, given as so. Uh, this should be something that is very familiar from our solution of the heat equation. And it turns out that the same rules apply. We get an extension. It's not exactly the same periodic extension we got last time. One important thing to observe is that sine is an odd function, and therefore a sum of sines must also be an odd function. What this means in particular is that the sine series x is equal minus x f of minus x is equal to minus of fx. Let's see what happens when the graph of fx is like so between 0 and L. So again, we draw a longer x-axis for our extension. Let's say this is 0, L to L minus L minus 2L. So once more, the graph looks exactly the same at 0 to L, this way. Since we know that a sine series is an odd function, we also then know how to write down f hat of x in the negative direction. It's just the odd reflection that you see. And now that we know what the interval from minus L to L is, we can simply repeat that for the rest of the real line, like so. Think about what happens at the jump discontinuities, and the behavior is exactly the same as the full Fourier series. We simply take the mean of the left end and the right end. The behavior is extremely similar for the cosine series. We draw a similar shape, less so. Again, we mark off minus L to L, and we pay attention to where 0 is. We draw the same graph as we had in the past. And now notice that our f is an even function, so f hat cx is even. And that means we just have a reflection around the y-axis. And this is what it looks like. Uh, so both should be the same height, clearly, and I'm just a terrible artist. All right. And since we know what happens between minus L and L, we can just repeat that for 3L and so on. And we have a minus 3L over here. And we just repeat the pattern we had in our original interval. Here they should connect. And so on. So the sine and cosine series really behave really similarly, except that we have to worry about how to obtain that original first interval.